around the house and... <gasps> He's not eating, John. Well, he's probably just had enough. He's hardly eaten anything. It's not right. Ah, oh, come on, I'll have a go. But I can do it, it's okay. Got a temperature? He hasn't got a temperature. Maybe it's his stomach. I should call the doctors. Well, I'd leave it a little bit before calling them again. There's probably nothing to worry about. You've hardly got a good record on that score, have you? Brendan, what is this about? Telephone. Telephone? Someone? I'm going to the loo. You're not getting away with this. Sorry! Sorry I'm late! Oh, thanks. Hello, surgery? Yes? Yes, hang on. I'll have a look for you. Um, no, I'm sorry, Dr. McGuire's got a full list today. He could probably fit you in on Thursday, though. I know. Well, if it's really that urgent, why don't you come in later and we could do you as an emergency appointment? I don't believe it. Oh, thanks, Ruth. You are a star. Not happy with the appointment, sister. Honestly, she rings up saying she needs to see a doctor as soon as possible for her baby, and then she suddenly turns around and says, Oh, no, it's all right. He started eating again. I reckon she must be one of those munchkin by proxy women making her kid ill so she can pester the likes of us all the time. People get upset, Joe. They're not always thinking straight when they phone up asking for help. Well, yes, but there's no need to be quite so rude, is there? Everybody has a good reason for being how they are. And who was it? Uh, Mrs Cobb. She came in to register with her little boy last week. Celia Cobb? Yeah. Charlie. Charlie, oh, he's just going to take your temperature. Ready? Okay, what's it going to be? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. You are still a bit pale, aren't you, darling? Uh, Francis, can you spare us a second? Yeah. I was just wondering if there's anything in the bring forward file. No, 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 it's clear. And I've sent off the briefing. Oh, good. Um, anything in the diary? Nothing that I can't deal with. If you want to get away... Yeah, you got my home phone number, haven't you? Yes, if anything turns up, I'll... Yeah. Right, uh, sorry about all this, Francis. Uh, it's just Celia thinks Charlie's, um... Well, she thinks there's something wrong with him. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. I can tell when you're lying, Mac. Oh. Your mouth moves. The reason I didn't tell you how expensive the tiling was going to be is because I knew you'd react just like this. Oh, so you thought keep the little woman in the dark and surprise her at the end of the month, did it's you? My mind, I am sorry. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I disturbed you. Oh, no, 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 no. Mac's just coming over all Victorian. Member of the weaker sex to see you, Mac. Don't ask. Have you got a moment now? Let's be quick. See you, Cobb. The woman with the little boy? She yeah, yeah. just joined your list? Yeah, I saw her last week. Well, they came and had their appointment with me. And something's not quite right. Between them and the baby? No. It's Celia and her husband I'm worried about. But the baby is fine. Yes, it's them. Their relationship seems a bit... But I appreciate your concern, but we are a medical practice, not marriage guidance. Yes. But... You know how... I do know how that these things can have a detrimental effect on health, but I have a waiting room full of patients. Ruth, from a distance, anyone's marriage can look a bit odd, but that doesn't necessarily mean that things aren't OK. I understand. Usually means they're dreadful. What? Nothing. Oh, 
Yeah, let me do that. No, it's all right. Look, it's any baby food. I'm sure even I can do that. Yeah, but it has to be done right. Well, let me hold Charlie, then. No. Oh, for goodness sake, Celia. It's OK, Charlie. Are you OK? Oh, where's it hurting? There's, there's nothing wrong with him. There never is anything wrong with him. His breathing's changed. It's different. Yeah, he's, he's upset. You've scared him. Well, what else am I supposed to do? Well, let me look after him. I can't trust you with him. Look, he does happen to be my child as well, and it's not me that's hurting him, it's you. You don't know how to look after him. Well, it's hardly surprising, isn't it? You never let me pick him up. No, it's always, don't do it like that, Johnny. You got it all wrong, John. Look, there's no wonder things are as bad as they are. Look, I'm just sick of you swaddling him in cotton wool. I'm, I'm just not having it anymore. Why do you think I don't want you to look after him? Go on. Say it. Look, his breathing's changed and you're not even worried. I'm taking him to the doctors. Celia, let me drive you there. Oh. Please, Celia. Oh, Mark. Sorry to disturb you again, but I've been thinking about Celia Cobb. I wondered if you would do me a favour. I am a bit tied up at the moment. She's bringing Charlie in. Could you send them along to me? Will you be free? I've got quite an easy morning. Look, I know things have been tough since Anushka went, but I don't want you playing Mother Teresa to all the failing marriages in the country. I just want to have a chat to her. You're not going to let this one go, are you? No. Is it from here or here? Here. OK, I'll send her through. I think you should have a look at the patient's notes, though. Why are you so interested in this? Just read them. Mrs. Cobb. Celia. It's all right, John. I'll see you out here. Okay. That's it through there. Well, we've uh, finally got your notes from your last practice. There's just one thing that I want to discuss with Charlie, you. Charlie, uh, um, there's something not quite right with him, Mr. Tom. What makes you think that? Um, he was off his food this morning. Anything else? Um, he had a bit of an upset. His uh, breathing went funny. Okay. Well, if you stick Charlie on the bed, have a look at him. You've seen something. What's wrong with him? It's a small bruise. What a bruise. He's been hurt. No, it's just a knock. Probably didn't even notice it. It's John. Are you saying John's hurting him? He, he doesn't realise how fragile babies are. He doesn't know how to take care of him. It, I have to look after Charlie all the time. I can't rely on John. Look, if you're worried that John isn't handling the baby correctly, we should make an appointment with Ruth at the baby clinic. <laughs> He won't be interested. But with him, it's, oh, everything's all right. Well, just give it a try, eh? Ruth can be very persuasive. What's the point? Come on, Celia. Look, if you and John are having problems, then we're here to help. I know Ruth's got a fairly light morning. Look, it's uh, bound to be difficult, especially with all no, the... No, you're right. Of course you are. Of course you are. We'll pop up now, shall we? Come on, Charlie. Thanks, Dr. McGuire. Yeah. Right, you just... Pass the baby over like that. See? You see? It's as easy as that. Now, Celia, do you want to pass the baby over to John? Come on. It's all right. Hey, darling, what's the matter? Like, like he doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, you can teach him, though. You're happy to learn, aren't you, John? Yeah. Okay. Look, it's safe. Just hand the baby across. No? Yes. Okay. Here you go. Go on. Go to Daddy. Hmm? Yeah, I can't. It's okay. It's okay. 
What's keeping you? Come on, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? You know, if you're just a bit more relaxed about the whole thing. Relaxed? You think this is some silly woman's thing, don't you? Hey, look, you, you don't know what it's been like. If for one minute you were just to let me actually... Let you? Let you what, John? Let you take care of him? Well, what's going to happen then, hey? What? OK, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. Let's just settle down, eh? Hey? Celia, do you mind taking Charlie down to my room for a while? Thanks. Look, I'm sorry about all this. You must be very busy here. It's fine, you know, it's... It's just one of those things. I see that he was concerned about a bruise on Charlie. Oh, God, is he all right? Yeah, yeah, he's fine. They're tougher than you think. At least they're tougher than your wife thinks. Yeah, she gets a bit worried sometimes. In case he dies too? What do you mean? It was in your medical notes. Sudden infant death. I'm sorry. We don't really talk about it. Now she's worried about Charlie, a bit overprotected. She won't even let him out of her sight. But that's understandable, really, isn't it? You know, a thing like that. We're getting on with it, though. It's going to be all right. Do you mind if I have a word with her? Well, if you think it'll do any good. Celia, what's going on? Nothing. Nothing? So tell me about the baby. He's fine. Aren't you? You said he was fine. I mean your first baby. <laughs> How long ago was it? Does it matter? Like it was... Yesterday, like it's today. You know, people say time is a great healer. But it's not. Every time I got to the second step at the top of the stairs, I looked towards the nursery and I think he'd still be alive when I went in. It was all a big mistake. It was just behind the door. I was dreaming it. John said we should move, you know, the memories in the house and the garden where he was. So we did. But it doesn't make anything any better. They're just like thick photos now, you know, inside. You should have seen him. He had that little smile. It was, it was really clever working things out inside. It's really stupid. No, no, I don't know what you mean. It sounded really funny when you said that. You know, my first baby. What's this got to do with anything anyway? Did things change when Charlie came along? Well, I thought that when Celia was more sure that Charlie was going to be all right, then things would get different, but... You know, it just didn't happen. You know, if he was crying in the night, it always had to be her that went to deal with him. You know? and I wasn't allowed to. She wouldn't let me. You know? In case I... In case I got it wrong. Have you tried talking to her about it? Every time I bring it up, he'd sooner be talking about something else. He even talks about the weather. Do you know what that's like? Having something like that there all the time and the other person completely ignore it. I worked in Belfast for a while and they used to say that trying to ignore the troubles was like trying to ignore an elephant in your living room. Except it's not just in the living room, is it? It's, it's in the garden, in the hallway, in the bedroom. In the beginning you try and crawl over it, but you can't do that by yourself, can you? So you stop, and then there's just this dead thing between you. Dead thing. How does that make you think about Charlie? <coughs> you mean, is that why I'm overprotective? I 
I know what's happening, I just can't stop myself. Oh, the number of doctors we've been through. <laughs> Every time he gets a sniffle, I think. He's going to die, he's going to die. But there's just a bit of me thinking, well, it's a sniffle. Don't plague the doctors again. There's nothing to worry about, it's a sniffle. If Charlie goes and that's it, there won't be anything else. I might as well be dead. Did you and Celia ever think of getting some help afterwards? There are lots of schemes available. No, it's not for me. You've got to get on, haven't you? Did Celia ever think? No, I don't think so. And you can't say I haven't tried. You know, we're walking down the street and I, I see a baby clothes shop coming up. I, you know, I'll take her arm, get her to the other side of the road and you know, pretend we're looking at stereos or something. You know, so she won't see the shop. I didn't want her thinking about the baby. Talking. It doesn't make any difference, does it? You can't change what's happened. I can see you'd want her to be protected from those thoughts coming up again. But I'm surprised that you didn't get any offer of aftercare. And no help when Charlie was coming along. Were you offered some? Well, we were moving house, sir. I didn't think she was ready for all that. Did you say Celia wasn't interested? She doesn't want to go through all that again, does she? Those help schemes. You hid them from her. Didn't you? So then it was just you and John. And you had to depend on each other. But that was the problem, wasn't it? He just seemed so indifferent. How can I depend on him now to look after Charlie after what happened? I didn't want her to have to go through all that pain again. She wouldn't survive that. I've got to be there for her. I've got to be strong for her. There's no sense or order to these things. No matter what you did or didn't do, whether you were there or John was, the same thing might happen again. Or it might not. Now you're in control over what happens. That means trusting John, talking to him, finding out how he's feeling. Otherwise, it's not going to be any good for you, John, or Charlie. I know, I know you're right. So you'll give it a try? Josh. That was his name. The first time I've said it since the funeral. Hmm. If you weren't so overprotective to Celia, then she wouldn't need to be so overprotective to Charlie. I thought it would help. She thought it would help Charlie. But where did we end up, eh? His name was Josh. It's a good name. Yeah. Just gotta go and get something. This was one of Josh's. Yeah. I've had it at work. 
keeping it in my filing cabinet. I thought if you saw it, it would just remind you. Sorry I've upset you now, haven't I? I just had to hang on to a bit of him. No, I, I really, I wanted to get rid of it. I, I just couldn't. And I thought, if we could share it, then maybe... You're in reception. What is it? Well, I tried to explain surgery was finished, but she was having none of it, and, and then she started to look a bit peculiar. Right. Celia? <coughs> What's the matter? Well, it just doesn't work. I listened to what you said. I did listen to what you said. I listened to what you said, and it didn't work. What can I do now? What didn't work? Well, I handed him the baby, just like you showed me. It's, it's what he wanted, but when I did it, he wouldn't hold him. He, he said no and walked away. I really thought it would work, but... So it was, you see, when I came back that time. When George... When it happened. I came back. And John was with the baby in his arms. And their faces. So John was looking after Josh when he died. I'd only gone to the shops. It was 20 minutes. At John had gone upstairs to check on him. I mean, I was only gone 20 minutes. He wouldn't let go of him, you know. Even when the ambulance arrived, he just wouldn't let go of him. I'm going to see him. She went off, which she does. And I was wandering around the house. And everywhere I went, those things making me think of her. And Charlie. And because of Charlie, the other baby. So I've come out here to get my head straight. I don't want to think about them anymore. She says you're uncomfortable holding him. You know, I thought if I could just hold him, then things would be all right. I never held Charlie. She wouldn't let me. And then when she did let me, it was like all the pain in the world. Everything Celia had been going through, it was all wrapped up in this little bundle. I just couldn't hack it. Do you know, I really thought he'd got over it. And I was hating him for it, blaming him. I'm terrified of touching my own son. I can't offer anything to my wife. I've really messed things up for her. I've lied to her. She really needed me, and I've lied. I told them she didn't want any help when Charlie was conceived. I kept encouraging her to move on to see other doctors. I thought if I let him get the claws in and make a talk about the baby, then I'd have to talk about it. But now you can move on. Look, you don't understand what I'm saying. 
Your nurse was right. It's not me protecting Celia. It's me that can't stand it. It's me that's scared. Look, it's not going to make things any better if I stick around for them. Come on, John. So, why were you so persistent with them? Oh, I don't know. Just a feeling, you know? People lose a baby and they do strange things because they loved him so much. I can understand that. Yeah. Good work, Ruth. Thanks. 